Tell me, Mrs. Harris. What do you think your husband might be? Got any ideas? He's in the well? Y'all right, everybody, we are here today with the old Falcon one-shot. On the agenda, we have ourselves a little banger. I've been looking forward to it for a bit now. I've had my eye on this one for a while. This right here is Loretta. And when I first saw this, it kind of gave me all sorts of uh, cat lady vibes. Like the game, not a literal cat lady running around throwing cats at people. <laughs> Franbo. Little Misfortune. Essentially, one of those games where you know something is very, very terribly wrong, but you don't instantly get it. It's just a very slow burning banger until it fills up and it finally overflows and all hell lets loose. My name is Loretta Lou Harris. Friends call me Laura. I'm 38 years old. I was born in a small town in the south that y'all probably never heard of. The moment I turned 16, well, I ran away to the East Coast. I'm an unemployed ornithologist and a mediocre housewife. A few months ago, my husband and I moved to a farm that he got from his parents. Life here ain't exactly simple, but we get by all the same. Up until two weeks ago, anyway. When Walter up and disappeared without a trace. Mrs. Harris, I'm Frank Chambers. I'm looking for your husband. You from the police? Now, I already talked to the sheriff. I ain't got nothing more to say. No, ma'am. I'm leading a uh, private investigation. There's some people from New York. Important people. Who'd really like to have a word, Mr. Harris? All right. So we get a choice here. Already loving this look. Man. Tell me, I've been looking for this one for a while, man. Uh, let's see. Well, tell him to get in line. Who are, these Who are these important people? I didn't catch your last name. Well, let's find out about who might be looking for her husband. People who Mr. Harris still needs to pay. Mind if I come in? He wipes his neck with a handkerchief. You've got a very lovely house, ma'am. Seems to be uh, falling apart there, Chambers. Don't bother. I can't stand this place either. This is Mr. Harris's house? His parents. You're not from around here, are you? Or New York, for that matter. Don't test my hospitality. Sorry, didn't mean to offend. I'm paid to ask questions, you know. But my only concern is uh, Mr. Harris. Mainly, I need to know if he's alive. Or dead. Alright, so we can move around now. This guy kind of gives me a little bit of a Shelby vibe, you know, from Heavy Rain. So we can move around now. Let's see, we could, uh... Particularly interact with objects? Yes, we have a hat. Walter's hat. He bought it in New York. Then gets on my nerves. Sometimes it feels like I can hear it ticking from all the way in the bedroom. Walter and I by the ocean eight years ago. Interesting noise. Damn dusty roads. By the way, yes, I, I haven't uh, ignored the elephant in the room here. Just random axe hanging out here in the living room. I mean, we usually keep our umbrella next to it, just in case you're wondering. So we have an axe. Uh, let's let's avoid that one for now, huh? Scribbles. Anything else? The spider web there. Moose head. I don't lost count of how many times I asked Walter to throw this old nasty thing away. Well, I think that's about it, huh? Ma'am? 
How long has Mr. Harris been gone for? Two weeks. Who hired you want something to drink? So what do we do? Comply with him for now? I mean, let's find out more about who's looking for our husband, right? Why don't you start off by telling me, who is it that hired you? <clears throat> of course. I work for a firm called Wallace & Partners. I represent the interests of Mr. Wallace. Here's my card. Frank Chambers, private investigator. From New York. Your husband owes Mr. Wallace a substantial amount of money. Did Mr. Harris mention anything about that to you? I reckon your services cost a lot more than that. <laughs> I don't charge that much. I don't. Whew. Beads of sweat fall from Chambers' face onto his wrinkled shirt. Can I get you something to drink? The kitchen's just down the hall. Better cue. You're not going to answer that? Hello? Hello? Can I talk to Mr. Harris, please? Everybody's just looking for her husband. Who's calling? You can't come to the phone right now? She hangs up. May I ask who's calling? This is Patrick Fitzgerald from the Atlantic Press Publishing House. Would you kindly put Mr. Harris on the phone? It's extremely urgent. Uh, Mr. Harris ain't available. He ain't here. Well, what time will he be back? Miss? This is about his book. We're still waiting for him to send the second half. The contracts are ready, bud. Miss, could you please pass? They hung up. It happens sometimes. Well, it seems we have another instrument of destruction here in a sickle right in front of us. Oh, and this time we have poison, too. <laughs> How about that? Tell me, ma'am, your husband. Every time I try to grab, like, one of the tools, I get it cut off, interesting enough. Your husband. Did he happen to leave some kind of note? Maybe a letter? He didn't. Leah Sion found nothing if he did. Neither did Chavez's men. Hmm. Can't interact with the sickle anymore. Again. Cut off. It's a real nice, uh, almond smell in here. Not as much as the elm is going to be smelling after I put some poison in your water. Glass. Oh, I can't interact with the poison anymore. Maybe after the water? This humidity is killing me. He wipes his face with a handkerchief. I don't think it's been this hot since the spring of 39. Where's that music coming from? The fields. Farmers. Water in out land. I guess the music helps him pass the time. Hmm. His eyes linger on L Laura's hips. Oh. Chambers got the old wandering eye. She pretends not to notice. Oh, wait a second. Oh, wait a second. Uh oh. Hey. What the hell? Not so fast, bitch. Chamber shot me. He had no choice. Poisoning a man right before his very eyes. Wasn't the brightest idea I ever had. Who would have thought? This is how my story ends. Oh no, it tosses you back. See, I mean, you know me, I'm gonna try to get game over his foreheads too, but man, that's a harsh punishment all the way back here. Okay, we are back to where we uh perish last time around. Obviously this time we'll avoid the poison from this man. And I made all the same decisions I made beforehand just in case that affects anything going forward. Quite the shame for a fine lady like yourself to be stuck in a place like this. Here's your water. You're too kind. Thank you. He dries his lips on his sleeve. So, how much land do you got here, ma'am? Sixty or so acres. 
Don't get too excited. It was mortgaged a long while back. May I take a look at your yard? Suit yourself. What in? It's the pipes. Son of a... Got some plumbing installed. And what do you know? Sorry. I need to go down into the basement. Uh, you need a hand? Nah. No need to trouble yourself. Besides, you wanted to look around the place, didn't you? Yeah. Don't, don't follow me here into the basement. What weird ass sounds? It's damp and dark down in the basement. Too damp and too dark, right? Smells like mold. Just like Chambers' breath, actually. Finally, I can hardly find. <clears throat> I can hardly find the water pipes. At first glance, everything seems to be in order. But there's a weird buzzing sound coming from them. Looks like something's stuck in one of them. Hard to say what exactly. Come on, don't don't give me another game over. I hold out my hand and touch something wet and hairy. I grab hold of it and tug. A dead rat. Could have been worse. Buzzing stopped. Tell me, Mrs. Harris. What do you think your husband might be? Got any ideas? He's in the well? He's in the well? Begging your pardon? Oh. We got our introduction. <laughs> I mean, we kind of already kind of suspected, right? Let's be honest here. Now, how did this all come and be? What's this? Is that a raven or a crow? I can never tell them apart. I, many times people tell me, Falcon, this is how you tell them apart. Do I ever listen? No, of course I don't. I mean, I do listen, but I just forget because, you know. My brain, unfortunately, is incapable of holding any new information anymore in life. I filled it up to the brim, and let me tell you, there was not a lot of room there to begin with. I ain't trying to make excuses, but I think I ought to tell you my story from the beginning. But I ain't looking to be forgiven by the gentlemen of the jury. I know that's impossible now. But I want to give a chance to whoever's going to read this to maybe understand me. You see, my relation with Walter started to fall apart a long time before he died. Long before he moved to his goddamn farm. I even liked it at the start. Trading the bustling city life for a humble one out in the country. Of course, wishful thinking is all it was. Women don't get much choice in this world. Take enough wrong turns, and before you know it, you're low class. And I was finally starting to see that all my turns were the wrong ones too. Really, really good art too. Like the that little piece that we had right there. Alright, so let's see. Tab, we have a clothespin. The metal coil inside is rusted. An old well. I don't know why, but it gives me the creeps. We never use it. Yeah. Not yet, anyway. That's as far as we're going. Uh, nothing I can interact with here. Another broken, creaky step. Nail sticking out, waiting for the right moment. To finally jab it in my leg. I asked Walter to fix it. Not that that did any good. Walter wasn't a bad person. He almost never drank, 
And even when he did, he never got violent. And all our years together, he only hit me that one time. And he felt awful about it afterwards. Still, everything about him was starting to irritate me. And I reckon the feeling was mutual. That irritation turned into a burning hatred. It only got stronger after we moved out here. His snowing was like nails on a chalkboard. He'd spit everywhere like he was a damn camel. And food got stuck in his teeth all the time. But what really got under my skin was how he always reeked of onions. All the damn time. It was this disgusting, oily smell that soaked into all the furniture. Do you know what? You want to know what was weird thing was? I ain't never used any onions in my cooking. Little birdie. Scare it? Ignore it. No, I'm not gonna scare the bird. See, um, you can hang out. It's fine. Wash the dishes or leave them. I mean, I don't, I don't, yeah, we could go back to it. Okay, that's fine. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a breaking weather update. A Category 2 cyclone has been tracked approaching this from the south. Meteorologists have warned to expect heavy wind and rainfall in the coming days. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't, don't leave, buddy. You, you could hang out there. I guess we'll wash the dishes. Well, we never run out of dirty dishes in this house. Ouch! Cut my finger. Mm -hmm. Ain't anything in the basement I need right now. Oh, that's the basement. So if I just want to go to the living room, gotcha. Whoa, what the hell? Walt and I met towards the end of 1929. He was a little older than me. Mighty handsome, of course. He worked as a newspaper correspondent. But I couldn't tell you the name of what paper it was. They probably quit publishing it by now, anyway. My mother died in 1930. Walt and I got married in 1931. I got pregnant in 1933. Oh, I didn't even know she had a kid. They called it an ectopic pregnancy. And that was followed by... Oh. By a miscarriage. I lost my child before I ever got to be a mother. Is that a shadow right there? Hello? Who's calling? Am I gonna speak or what? You think this is funny? Hmm. Wait, wait. It was a shadow. Nobody there anymore. Or at least that shadow thing is gone. Uh, we could go in there if we want to, alright. Bottom cabinet. I'm not sure going to leave me somewhere else, so we might as well get this broom thing out of the way. Oh, I guess we need it for the, uh, the dish, right? Sure. There he is. Honey, I'm going into the city. But I'll be back soon. I need to stop by the post office. What happened? What's it look like? I broke a plate. <laughs> sure, let's uh, give him the long version. Wait, what? A bird? It's a long story. Still, I'm sorry about the plate. Don't worry about it. Let's consider it good luck, huh? Anyway, would you mind uh, ironing my suit? I think it's in the bedroom. Take the key. Couldn't you do it yourself? Okay, buy some milk on your way back. Fine. Not a problem. Alright, hon, I'm off. So this is another room. It's another room. And a jewelry box. Press any key to leave? Uh, what? Oh, I see. We're gonna have to crack this one eventually. Walter doesn't like it when I enter his study when he ain't around. Well, it's too bad for Walter, right? He ain't here. Ugh, that rakes the cigarettes in here. Dusty bookshelves. Walter bought half his library when he moved here. Didn't even 
bring a winner code. An old safe. Walter keeps the manuscript of his novel in there. Better not touch it. Not unless I want Walter to stop bitching anyways. Hmm. Maybe not now, but later, huh? Okay, uh, let's try out this one. Guest bedroom. As I understand it, Walter's parents slept in separate bedrooms. One of them harsh 1910 traditions. Walter and I turned this place upside down looking for the key, but no luck. She'll feel strange knowing I can't access certain part of the house. I like the house ain't big enough already. I mean... You moved in here and never found the key, so you're like, I forget this room. <laughs> Fuck. Bring this door out if I have to, just to get in there. Something went wrong in New York. I never found out what exactly. Walter fell into a pit of depth and dragged me down there with him. He left the obscenely high deposit we paid on our apartment, packed our bags and rented the cheapest rust bucket he could find. In the spring of 1947, we moved to the farm, to Walter's parents' old house. Edna and Douglas Harris died of diapers back in 1927. And so we jumped off the bumpy life, life raft and that was our former life and rushed into the unknown. My belongings are in this suitcase. Whole human life containing a few bags. We still ain't unpacked most of it. Oh. Uh, yeah. Birth certificate of John Edward Harris. 1946. Mother Loretta Lou Harris. Walter Philip Harris. Oh. Wait a second. It was October 1945 when I... Ah, oh, okay. Okay. So the times, the times, okay. So there was a second, okay. So the first one was a miscarriage, we actually might have actually had a kid then. It was October 1945 when I got pregnant again. Doctor said I was too old. He used some word phrase like elderly, parturiturant or something. Apparently with my medical history, neither me nor my baby stood a chance. 45. Two years before this, she was 38 at the time of 47, so she would have been 36. I mean, I'm not sure if 36 is too old, but I mean, it's, it's 1945, right? So, different technology and all that stuff. I reckon it was just a miracle. Nine months later, I gave birth to my boy, Johnny Harris. But I'm getting ahead of myself again. Or oh, maybe I'm going too far back. Long story short, I lost Johnny too. Of all Walter's sins, his adultery was the least to concern me. Let's say his gambling affected my life in a much more serious way. His adultery was pretty obvious. Walter hadn't touched me in months. Can't say I was too upset by it, though. Nonetheless, I knew one thing for sure. That ginger bitch Margaret sure did love her onions. <laughs> That's why you smell like onions all the time. <laughs> Yo, man, I'm already digging this a lot. Now that's an egg, right? And it seems to me, I mean, it, that's an egg cracking. I'm kind of curious if, uh... Well, let's just say if Loretta might have had a drinking problem when she was pregnant. I felt trapped. I was suffocating in this cramped farmer's paradise. I could feel the noose tying around my neck. This is very, uh, <laughs> very distracting, by the way. I went to the bank. So, can you state your profession, ma'am? Apparently we're no longer that, are we? I ain't working no more. I just run the house, mostly. But I used to be an ornithologist. Ornithologist. 
<laughs> Excuse me, how do you spell that? <laughs> a scientist. The kind who studies birds. Oh. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I never once considered what the hell an ornithologist even was. <laughs> but, now we might have a little bit of a link with the raven or crow that we saw earlier. Oh, I see. And how about the man of the house, ma'am? What does he do? Wait, Walter Harris? You mean the writer? Do you fear with the killer? The black tulip? I see you're a fan. <laughs> no, not, not me, I'm afraid. My wife, though. Why, she just adores his books. Who would have thought right out here in our backyard? Anyway. Well, ma'am, I'm sorry to say this, but we can't give you a loan. Well, not to you, anyway. But why don't you bring your husband around next time? I'm sure we can figure something out. I was hoping not to get my husband involved. Oh, I see. It's me that needs the money, not him. In that case, ma'am, if you urgently need money, then what's stopping you from taking out that 30000 and... What 30000 Uh, well now, just a moment. Well, 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 uh, yeah. Um, I beg your pardon, ma'am, that, that was my mistake. I just realized that 30000 is uh, an insurance. What insurance? What 30000 Life insurance, ma'am. Silly of me to have missed that before. But it looks like Mr. Harris' publisher took out an insurance policy in his name. Here, see for yourself. In the event of death or disappearance, yada yada yada, you can skip this part. The beneficiary will receive a lump sum payment of $30,000. Looks like a standard contract as insurance goes. Anywho, I must apologize again. I didn't mean to cause confusion. No, uh, thank you. You've been a big help. Glad to hear. In that case, I will be waiting for you and Mr. Harris to drop by on by. All the best, ma'am. Oh, and if you allow me to remind you that all deposits and contributions are insured with us at... Yada yada yada. That clerk's words broke through his cracked, creased lips. And dissipated into thin air. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand dollars. An incredible sum of money. I felt like the more I thought about it, the less I was able to comprehend how much money that really was. Walter? He hadn't ever said a word. Why not? I remember getting the strange feeling. It was weak. Not all there yet. But I felt it on the edge of my mind all the same. The moment I tried to catch it and pay attention to it, I left the bank. And the dry spring went into the outside world. Dispel that feeling as if it was never there to begin with. Alright everybody, that being said and done, we're out of time with this one. I hope you have enjoyed this long look at Loretta. All the information will be down below in case you want to pick it up for yourselves. This is only a Falcon one-shot, I wanted to bring the game to your attention. But, I enjoyed it enough that if you guys want to see some more, let me know in the comments, let me know by leaving a thumbs up. We can come back and do a bit more of this because... It's starting to gear up, right? Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, I'll catch you next time.